Mic? Good, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm James. Uh, I have a little bit of housekeeping myself for those of you who've just arrived. Um, there is an interactive portion of this to the latter half. Um, if you want to join in on your laptop, please follow those instructions. I'll leave them up for a couple, for a minute or so still. Uh, also, if you are connecting to the Wi-Fi and you want to take part in the interactive session, I would suggest strongly that you switch to a mobile hotspot, just so that we don't, don't all clobber uh, chat.openia.com from the openai.com from the same uh, IP address, because we will be rate limited. Uh, right. Um, let me know. Okay. Let me know if anyone still needs this up. Okay. Cool. Yes, doesn't, sorry, go. Um, I'm no matching manifest for Linux, I'm on M1. I just had that, yeah. Uh, this Docker image doesn't work on the, um, on the M1 silicon, on the new, uh, the new Apple chips. Uh, it is just, you can just download the standard WordPress thing and look at the Docker Compose file. Oh. The important bit is that you have a mount for the plugin direct, for the WP content directory, and you just, you just need WordPress file, that's it? pretty much, yeah. Okay, uh, and out of preference, I put my database in a separate container. Um, right. Anyone else? Great. Um, Sweet. Okay. So, uh, and I need to stand next to the mic. Uh, the name of my talk, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love My New AI Overlords. Um, any chance I get to channel Peter Sellers and The Simpsons at the same time, I'm down. Uh, so my name's James. I'm a software developer. I'm a wannabe maker, carpenter, electronic person who sold us incredibly badly. Uh, I'm a tabletop enthusiast, board games, role playing, etc., and I am an armchair opinionator, which is pretty much my entire set of credentials for this talk. Um, I graduated with a BSc in computer science from the University of Natal in South Africa, got an MSc in bioinformatics from the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa. I've done stints as a teacher and a lecturer in programming. Um, I've done some proteomic analysis on mass spec machines. I have sold my soul and done health insurance data analysis, I'm sorry. And uh, I've also worked on the very early generations of the biosensors to do pulse, blood pressure, et cetera, and watches. Um, uh, I work for WP Engine. Uh, I grew up in South Africa and I moved to Ireland about five years ago when I joined WP Engine. Uh, some disclaimers and just to set some expectations for this talk. I'm not a WordPress developer. I have tangentially helped my wife out on occasion with some WordPress uh, plugins. I do know PHP reasonably well from the 2000s, so I'm a little out of date on the PHP there. I'm not an AI expert, but in my defense, uh, as part of bioinformatics, I did do a lot of machine learning stuff, so I have a reasonable idea and a fair grasp of what's going on under the hood as much as anyone does. Uh, who isn't actually deeply involved in modern um, large language models. I'm not a business expert, so I'm not going to be able to help you sell your stuff. All my opinions are my own and entirely AI generated, all hail our new Ava AI overlords. Um, so that's who I am. Uh, I'd like to get a sort of show of hands. This talk is sort of pitched at a bunch of different people and a bunch of different. Uh, a bunch of different personas in the community. So can I get a show of hands? Who here uses WordPress as a blog, uh, as a content generator, on a sort of individual basis or for a small business? OK, so that's sort of about a third of you. Yeah, that tracks, OK. Um, who here works for an agency, marketing, uses WordPress as that? OK, and I see some of those hands have been raised twice, OK. Uh, who here develops plugins or works on the core? Okay, right. A third, a third, a third with a little bit of Venn diagram mixing in the middle. That, yeah, all right. So this talk is for everyone here, I hope. A little bit less so for the agency folks, I think, but uh, we'll see how we get along. Uh, right, so 
I like an interactive audience. Feel free to interrupt with questions. Um, if that disturbs the recording because we have to pass a mic around, let me know. Okay, thanks. Uh, ideally, don't save them to the end. Uh, that being said, we are on a time limit, so I may pull out the old line, talk to me after the show for that. Um, prerequisites, like I said, please have Docker re re installed and ready to go. Pull those images. If you're on an M1, do what you need to do. Um, and I suggest that you get those pulls going if you haven't already, uh, whilst I talk at you for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Right. So uh, my talk broadly is going to cover my opinions, and they are mostly my opinions, on how AI, specifically generative AIs, large language models, ChatGBT, BART, et cetera, are going to be uh, influencing and changing the WordPress community uh, over the next year to five years. Um, so, who here feels nervous? Why is this not in slideshow mode? Dope. Sorry. Uh, who here feels nervous that AI is coming for their job if you are in the sort of content creator, blogging side of things? Show of hands. No one. Okay, one or two, one or two, all right. Um, uh, <coughs> spoiler, you're not wrong. Uh, uh, to those people who didn't raise their hands, I think. Uh, we should be okay. So um, for content creators, what we've got is, <sighs> AI is probably not going to, again, my opinion, significantly influence your jobs uh, in the next year or two. Uh, that might change in the next five years. Things are moving very quickly in the field. But specifically, if, if you're already doing the job, if you're already taking money from clients or in an agency and you are generating content on the day-to-day, on the day -day, you have probably already used ChatGPT to give me a list of 10 things to do in Athens whilst I'm at a conference. Um, and I think AI used correctly will increase your productivity. Um, the question is, is the market going to expand? Because everyone can go to ChatGPT and generate a list of 10 things to do in Athens. And how many of those are we going to see? So, uh, I, I mean, we saw it in magazines when the internet became a thing. Uh, you know, fluff magazines on travel magazines on planes went away because the internet took over. Uh, so, for me, I think the big question here is, is the market going to expand to meet the supply of content generation? Because content generation is going to be massively accelerated. Uh, and I suspect your jobs, you'll know better than me probably, will mostly transform into more of a sort of sub-editing or fact-checking role. And I, I need to stress the fact-checking role. Um, uh, I'm sure if you have used ChatGPT uh, or any of the other ones, you've realized how they can go spectacularly wrong and more importantly, confidently spectacularly wrong. Um, uh, but with that, the competition for eyeballs is only going to get fiercer, so I think the quality will out, outpace, uh, not outpace, outmatch quantity eventually. Um, for those of you who are developers who are actually working in the WordPress code base or working on plugins, who here feels nervous about AI replacing their jobs? No one, one hand, two hands, three hands, okay, all right. Uh, spoiler alert, again, I, I think people with hands down, you're right, because we will learn by the end of this, we're okay. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, yes, I wanted to point out this. So uh, all of the images I have uh, done are generated with Dali. Uh, I've got the prompts up at the top there. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm confident that humans aren't being replaced is that it took me several dozen attempts to get decent images out of that for what I wanted. Um, uh, and for some reason, Dali thinks humans on ladders have three arms. Mm. Uh, right, so developers. Is AI coming for my job? Probably not, I think, is my answer. Uh, what developer tasks is AI good at? Small, specific, and solved. Uh, I mean, anyone who's used it already will probably know 
you know, I want to transform this markdown table into HTML or vice versa. Spot on, fantastic. A three gigabyte table done in a minute, fine. Um, I want to take that markdown table and integrate it into this other page that you've been working on that I have given you several hints about the content and context of, and now you've just gone and forgotten that context because you started working on a different problem and I got past the maximum token stream. I'm like, okay, that's not helpful. So where, where I found that AI systems, uh, large language model systems tend to fall down when you have lots, uh, a large amount of context that it needs to juggle and you are juggling on specific bits and switching between them and it just kind of, it kind of focuses in on the thing that you did most recently and doesn't integrate it properly with the thing that you did before. Um, again, what it's good at, boilerplate, refactoring, advanced linting. Hey, can you double check this, double check my code and make sure that it's um, up to the WordPress coding standards? Fantastic. Eh, let me not say fantastic, pretty good. <laughs> um, where is it not so great? Uh, so, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you get deep into SQL, but there is something that you can do in SQL called ranking. Uh, so you have a bunch of stuff and you've got a bunch of teams and a bunch of players in the teams and you wanna get the top player by goal in the season for the team. That used to be a really gnarly difficult query. Modern SQL, I think from about eight onwards, has some convenience functions added that make ranking substantially simpler. ChatGPT knows about MySQL 8 and up. You ask ChatGPT, it gives you a nice little thing. You try to run it on a certain hosting company's thing who doesn't have an up-to-date uh, MySQL and they won't allow you to update MySQL and you get random errors. Well, not random errors. You get weird MySQL errors. You tell ChatGPT about those errors and ChatGPT goes, I don't know, here's the same thing again, because ChatGPT was never trained on pre-MySQL 8 documentation. Um, so it doesn't give you the solution, and when you tell it, I can't use higher than MySQL 5.8 or whatever, even then it goes, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about before MySQL 5.8. Maybe that's improved in the last six months, but that was one of my, uh, one of my issues with, um, with it. The other thing is new technologies. Here's a singer, which we will encounter later on. ChatGPT doesn't know about the latest version of itself. That's not surprising, but when you're trying to use ChatGPT to write a plugin to contact ChatGPT, it is a bit of a surprise. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, the composing of small solutions into larger systems uh, tends to get it very confused. So, uh, Here's my take on it. AI is gonna transform developers' jobs. Um, you're gonna to need to learn to use AI to increase your productivity to keep up with your teammates and your competitors. Uh, you need to understand the AI results and learn how to be able to tweak them. You can't just take what it gives you for granted. Uh, the skills that you're gonna to need to develop if you haven't got them already are how to compose separate specific tasks that ChatGPT or another AI system has solved into a, a more complicated system and work on those integrations. And right now, most of those integrations are gonna be manual tweaking. Um, it's still on you to keep up to date with the latest, My, uh, with the latest MySQL uh, uh, version and all other new technologies. Uh, and also, uh, if you're developing COBOL uh, or some other really old technology, then um, uh, yeah, you're still on your own and the banks will pay you a huge amount, I'm sure. Um, so, for those of you that had your hands up originally when I asked if you're nervous, has your opinion changed at all? Anybody, uh, anybody sticking with their guns and still nervous that AI is coming for you? No one. Okay, yay, my job is done. <laughs> um, so, there is a threat from AI though. Uh, and really, that, that, uh, that it's subtle, uh, and it's probably, at least to me, it took me a while to kind of like process it in my head and figure it out. Uh, like I said, AI is good at small, specific tasks. It's coming for, your low, for the low-hanging fruit first. For those of you who are writing content for a living, when your boss is gonna be asking you for a thousand words by the morning on a trip to Athens and what to do, um, 
yeah, sure, they can just go and ask AI. Uh, so that aspect of your job is honestly probably under threat. Uh, for the developer's side, when your team lead needs you to make the plugin call to an API that injects the results into a page, chat GPT, small specific task, probably easy to do. Um, the trick is gonna be in knowing what to ask for, um, and I was having this conversation with one of you last night, um, and you need to know where you're going. You need to know what you want the results to be in order to effectively use the tools. Um, sorry, I'm a little too close to the mic and boomy there. Uh, and uh, like there's a, there's a thing called prompt engineering coming out. Uh, that's not what I mean. Prompt engineering is more about the how and like the actual language that you use to, uh, to communicate with ChatGPT. Um, I'm talking more about the actual, you need to know the context and the thing that you're trying to do and the result that you're trying to achieve in order to essentially validate what ChatGPT gives back to you. Um, so that unfortunately requires experience and it generally means that to get that experience you have to have done the job yourself at least once or twice to kind of know what's meant to happen. Um, and it, you know, that means that you need a deep understanding of the basics. Uh, so this is why I say that the threat is subtle. Those of us in this room who already have jobs and who are already working in the field and um, already active in the WordPress community, the stuff that we do, chat, AI systems are gonna help us do our jobs. But for people new to the community, for the junior in your job who's coming in fresh graduate from university or something, they're the people who are not gonna get the learning opportunities because their tasks are going to be Go do this, go ask AI, chat GPT, Bard to do this thing, come back to me with a thousand words or a function that does X. And that's not a learning experience anymore. So uh, again, uh, this is a DALI image. Uh, this is probably the one that I had the most trouble with, to be honest. Um, I, I, like I said, the number of times I got three armed people climbing up ladders, um, I don't know where that came from. Uh, but we, uh, we need to be careful that we don't pull the ladder up behind us. We know we don't want to chop off that bottom rung and raise the barrier to entry to getting into our community. Uh, so how do we leave the ladder down um, and how do we help others up? Uh, I, sorry, I jumped ahead a slide. Um, yeah, we need to start incorporating the idea of using AI tools uh, for educating in our community. Uh, for doing our jobs, whatever those jobs may be, and for teaching people actively when they are using those tools, the bits that those tools don't cover for them. Provide the learning experience that we had, banging our heads against the wall trying to do things. Um, and, and that's not as simple as don't use an AI tool because people need to learn how to use them. We just need to be, I think, more cognizant and more focused on the idea that we need to get the groundwork, the basic concepts across to people who are new, um, and to do that in a way that allows them to leverage AI systems without using them and relying on them exclusively. How we do that, that's a discussion we need to have. I don't know. Um, yeah, okay, so I think I've already asked, have I made you less nervous? Uh, now, have I made you more nervous with that? Um, does anyone have any comments or ideas on this? Uh, like I said, I'm looking for some interactivity here. Uh, any other opinions? Fight me. Nope, okay. Uh, right, so uh, now for the practical fun stuff. Um, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and use ChatGPT to make a plugin that contacts ChatGPT to replace the selected text in the block editor with some chat GPT generated content, taking what the selected text was as a prompt. Expectation setting, chat GPT is random. There is no guarantee, in fact, I, the, there's the opposite. I guarantee that I'm not gonna get the results that I got when I was preparing for this. We may not get to a working plugin. Um, there is a link at the end of this uh, to um, a Google Drive folder where you got the Docker Compose file from. Uh, which has the working solution. Um, I didn't get there solely with ChatGPT, uh, and I don't think anyone could, no matter how random it got, precisely because it doesn't know about the latest version of itself. Um, 
uh, and especially like, like I put some screencasts up about how far I got with ChatGPT, but there are multiple gigs, and you should probably watch them at five times speed because watching me type and ChatGPT scroll is quite boring. Um, all the links are at the slide on the end, uh, at a slide, uh, on a slide at the end. Uh. Um, okay, uh, I suppose let's get into it. So feel free to follow along on your laptops. Uh, Chat.openia.com is what you're looking for. Um, sorry, let me enhance. Um, excuse me, what? Right, so I've cleared my chat history. Uh, if any of you have worked with this before, you will know that it learns from what you've done. So I don't want to be influenced by the stuff that I've done already. I'm gonna start with a new chat. That chat is gonna be, uh, so I'm gonna give uh, ChatGPT a persona to work as. So you are a WordPress developer. Do my best to assist you, thank you. Great, um, I'm, I, wait here. Yeah. Wait, I want to write a plugin uh, that calls ChatGPT to replace selected text in the block editor, editor, editor with ChatGPT generated content. Let's see how this does. So it's telling us what to do. Yes, requires a good understanding of JavaScript, WordPress, etc. So uh, we can have a look at this. But let's be honest, I'm lazy and I want to see some code, so I'm going to say I'm. <laughs> ah. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Okay, JS file, great. Hmm, okay, I can already spot a couple of problems here, but I'll let it finish. Uh, yeah. Roughly speaking, are you guys getting the same responses so far? Uh, for example, how many of you have got a file that doesn't have a separate JavaScript bit split off into a separate file. Yeah, one, two, a couple of you, yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> wait till you confuse it later when you ask it to use WordPress coding standards. Sorry, yes, a question. Uh, I think that this is four? Yes, yeah, sorry, this would be four at the moment. I'm, I'm on paid. Um, uh, so some of you will also not be getting the same responses if you are on free accounts. Um, Thanks for the reminder. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, we got a PHP file, that looks about right. Uh, plugin, uh, enqueue my script. Uh, I see that it's picked my plugin name as just ChatGPT, so I wanna change that. Fair warning, yeah, sorry, yes, go. I think that's different types. Core gives different responses. Oh, okay. Oh yes, right, good point. Huh, why didn't I pick my login up? Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I must have. Oh, right, sorry, yes, I paid on my work account and this is my personal account. Uh, expensing and all that. Right, uh, so sorry, yes, this is, this is 3.5, my bad. Thank you for picking that up. Um, so, uh, it enqueues some scripts. Yeah. 
registers the API endpoint. Uh, yes, okay. ChatGPT, it gets some text. It wants a ChatGPT API key. Yes, that's looking good. It sends it with an authorization bearer. Sends it with a prompt, max tokens. Ah, okay, so here's the thing. This bit here. The DaVinci Codex is no longer a model. Or oh, uh, it's gone, that they have replaced it. So that URL doesn't work anymore. That was the one bit that I ran into where you know, it was ChatGPT doesn't know about the latest U, uh, API endpoints for itself. Uh, so we'll have to update that manually. We'll get there. Um, yeah, prompt is the input text, max tokens 50. Oh, you're cheaping out on me, it used to be 100. Um, make the WP remote post. Oh, so the first time I tried this, the it didn't use WP remote post, it used curl. Um, and <clears throat> only after I asked it to do WP um, WordPress uh, coding standards did it change it. And now it seems to have remembered that at least in my personal account. Um, error checking. So that looks pretty good to me. The JavaScript is where I tend to get nervous. So data subscribe, selected text. You know what? Let's give it a shot. So uh, I'm going to copy that. Wait, has it actually told me what to do with this? Yes, create a file. And it doesn't tell me what to do with this. So uh, I should ask. Oh, wait, it finished. Upload doesn't tell me. Right, so I'm pretty sure that there is a plugin already called ChatGPT Content Generator, uh, which I didn't know the first time I tried this, and when I did, it tried to tell me that there was an update for my plugin locally. So uh, I'm gonna say, I want to call my plugin Smart Mouthed robot. If I'm getting Simpsons into the title, I'm getting Futurama into, into the workshop. Okay, so, ah, so that's the odd thing there. It seems to have not picked up the change for our JavaScript file. Okay, cut and paste time. Uh, is that big enough? No, probably not, hang on. Is that big enough for folks to read? Uh, one did I copy the PHP and then let's go have a look at the Not that code. Here it is.
Smartmath robot, plug in their URL. Smartmath robot. That looks about right. Okay. Is everyone following along? You know why I'm replacing this piece of scripts? Because I changed the plugin name. Great. Uh, all right. Let us see how we are doing. Um, I should have done this before, but uh, I've downloaded everything. Uh, right. Uh, what are you listening on? Oh, wait. Static Docker Compose file. Sorry, the first time I tried this, I tried to make the Docker Compose file using ChatGPT2, and it also uh, kept changing the, the port. Uh, 8,000. So if we hit localhost 8,000, we get a fresh WordPress install. We get a fresh WordPress install. That's good. Um, Futurama favorites. Don't judge me. Week, why are you not giving me install word? Oh, confirm the use. There we go. Judge me. Fine. Log in. How am I doing for time? Okay. We'll see how far we get. All right, so if we hop over to plugins, it hasn't picked up, picked up our plugin. Wait, that is because I haven't saved the plugin? No, that's because I put the plugin in the wrong place. My bad. Uh, I'm just making a plugin directory, and I'm going to move all my smart mouth robot stuff to WP content plugins smart mouth robot, and I'm going to do a refresh. Boom. Uh, okay, so first obvious thing, it did not update the name of the plugin. Sorry, if it's not obvious, you are not obliged to use Vim. Personal preference, I'm a masochist. Um, <clears throat> never tell that to an Emacs person. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Yes, okay, uh, we're gonna activate that. And we are gonna go and create a new post and see how it has done something for us. Add a new post. Um, I'm not actually seeing this working. That's not a surprise. Uh, so let me go back to the code and see how it expects this to work. Uh, what's it hooking into? So data, uh, WP data, sorry, uh, let me highlight the line here. WP data select core editor get selected block attributes content, yes. But it seems, so, oh, it's subscribing. 
Okay, somebody who is more familiar with WordPress in the block editor. This is a new one. I haven't seen this particular um, generation from ChatGPT before. Uh, WPData.subscribe. Does anyone know what that's going to do? Nope. Yes, okay. Okay, but it won't trigger when I actually select text. Not when you select text. Yeah, okay. All right, so then uh, I'm going to try this again. Um, I would like the plugin to create. Uh, okay, I'm jumping ahead here just in the uh, interests of time. Uh, post meta button that the user can click to initiate the text replacement. And scroll down. Come on. Yes, Metabox. Okay, this is starting to look more familiar. So, what's it saying? Uh, create a post Metabox. The user can click. Okay, that's what I asked you to do. Uh, here's an updated version. Um, yeah, it's in queuing a style now. That's new. Uh, didn't ask for that, but thanks. In queue, block editor assets, yeah, all right. Um, API endpoint, make the call, register rest route, yes. That's mostly unchanged. Um, so this is all PHP, though. Uh, it has added a meta box, right. Can you update the JavaScript to trigger on the of the post meta button. Uh, okay. At least it's, uh, it deals with autocorrupt. So what do we got now? Okay, we got a function to handle a button click, and we have a on click the button call the function. Right. Um, this is going to WP data select call get the attributes content. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going. Okay, you're welcome to take what you've got, copy it in, and try it out locally. I know this isn't going to do what I want it to do, so I'm just going to jump ahead. The reason that I know it's not going to do what I want it to do is because it's not going to actually get the selected text. It's going to get, it's going to expand itself to get all the text in the block where text is selected. At least that's what it did previously. So I'm going to ask, can you, uh, can you, only the ten minutes. Okay, all right. Ah, okay, all right. Um, good to know. Uh, all right. Selected text trim. Yes, this is looking better. This is new to me, but I'll take it. Uh, all right, I'm just going to copy this and pop it into and where was the last PHP section? Right. 
that uh, this may break, or at least this may look weird without the CSS, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, right, that error message is going past way too quickly. Uh, right, okay. I don't know what has gone wrong here. Back to the code. I'm gonna just kill the style. Uh, I'm happy to take pair programming advice here. If you spot the error, please let me know. <laughs> uh, I would if I could see the error message. <laughs> um, but actually, yeah, why not? Um, sorry? Uh, I do, I have an API key and a text file that I will add. We haven't even got to the point where we can initiate the click though. Like, as I said, like the point of this was not to get to a working plugin, the point of this was to show how hard it is to get to a working plugin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, how am I for time? Five minutes. Okay. Uh, sorry we didn't get as far as I would have liked. Um, I'm going to call I'm going to call it here. I do have a working example on the Google Drive um, uh, that is linked in the slides, which I will get back to now. Slide share. There we go. Um, so... Uh, one, I hope that this is, for those of you who haven't done this before, I hope it gives you an idea of the workflow of using ChatGPT. We have reports that ChatGPT4 is better. So maybe ChatGPT4, when installed in the robot chasing you, it will actually catch up to you. Um, there's the link. Uh, um, you should have the slides available uh, on the website to download where that link is clickable. And you don't need to type that horrible monster out. Um, uh, there's also a screenshot, uh, a screencast, two and a half hours long, of how I generated the Docker file, um, and I will upload a screencast of my initial fights with this, uh, but it's more than two hours long and several gigabytes, so I have not uploaded it over the hotel Wi-Fi or this Wi-Fi. Um, uh, I'll put that up uh, when I get back to the office on Monday. Uh, I have a couple of other things. For those of you who actually want to learn more about the, uh, the innards of um, large language models, I can highly recommend Stephen Wolfram's ChatGPT write-up. Link, link there. Uh, Byte Byte Go's um, deep dive video is very good as well. Um, for those of you who just want to like, get some cool ideas about how to use ChatGPT, chances are that they were listicles generated by ChatGPT themselves. But Hell's World has, like, I think it's 21 ways to use ChatGPT. Uh, and then for those people who are concerned about AI and the general threats to humanity, I highly recommend the Alignment Newsletter podcast. Um, it really dives into the, uh, it, it really does a deep dive into the alignment problem. For those of you who know what that is, who don't know what that is, that's we train AB, uh, that, that is the problem that AIs don't necessarily solve the problem we think we're training them to solve because we don't really fundamentally have a, an understanding of how they learn. And so there is this whole sort of meta field of AI research about how do we inspect AI models to understand how they work and how do we validate, prove, work with, and constrain AIs to work within various boundary, ethical boundaries, legal boundaries, et cetera. Really, uh, um, it's meaty. There's a lot to chew on there, but I highly recommend it. Uh, 
Thank you very much. It's been fun. Uh, thank you.